Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your he swings and drives from the deep left center photo news fix this fix is brought to you by data color and their spider checker video the spider checker video is a must-have for professional videographers hybrid shooters who do both stills and videos as well as content creators the checker video is ideal for users who want a quick easy way to ensure color accuracy in their videos spider checker video is a color reference chart for use with video vector scopes waveform monitors and professional video editing software such as davinci resolve adobe premiere and final cut pro to ensure accurate video color and exposure. Spider Checker video allows users to color calibrate one or more cameras and lens combinations to help get color correct at the start of shooting, in addition to streamlining the post-production workflow. The Checker video is portable, sustainable, interchangeable, and compatible. If you want accurate color for your videos and photos, you need the Color Checker video. For more information and to grab yours, head on over to datacolor.com slash Fro. First up, it looks like haptic feedback might be coming to a camera near you one day soon. Last week, Canon filed for a patent, and this week, Sony did the same. Both patents involve a way of notifying the user that something has occurred. Oh. And by occurred, I really mean occurred. In Sony's case, it looks like their patent is focused on, and, and no pun intended, the shutter button. And with Canon, the patent is more for a one series type camera, which is larger, and it seems like theirs is focused more on the grip and body doing some sort of vibrating. What kind of tinkle? Now this, of course, is not a new idea, uh, an option for haptic feedback, but how it ultimately gets implemented and what features might be tied to it will be interesting to see. For one, I would love when I'm shooting silent to get some feeling that I am actually shooting. In the old days, we felt the slap of the mirror and knew we were shooting. Today, when shooting with the R3, 3A1 and Z9, you have a few different ways to visually know that you're shooting in silent. The R3 has a thick box around the perimeter of the viewfinder that lights up. The A1 has a buffer indicator that goes down along with a box that shows up. And the Z9, well, it's extremely difficult to know when you're shooting silent with that one, as you can barely see the blinking box around the frame. Now, anyone who uses a Z9 and has tried the R3 or A1, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So that means if you've never use the Z9, shut your mouth. I'm gonna now, I'd personally love to feel some sort of sensation in my palm or in the shutter button to let me know that I'm actually shooting. So maybe there's like a wireless shock device I could put on my nuts. With that being said, I think the main concern for these camera manufacturers is will the vibration mess up your images in one way or another? Next up, if you're hoping to grab a Canon 10 to 20 F4 or Nikon 600 6.3, both Canon and Nikon apologize. They apologize pretty much with identical apologies. Apologize. We've received more orders than expected. Blah, 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 blah. Global supply chain. Blah, 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 blah. That was an excuse like two years ago, but not now. We're it now, now. Not so much, that is. And we, we get it. You're short on supply initially, but you don't see Apple apologizing that they received more orders than expected for their latest mm -hmm. iPhone. Phone call. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Two mm -hmm. phones are ringing. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Wait, it's both me, Nikon me, 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 and Canon yeah, PR yeah. trying to yell at me. me, me, me uh, one me, at a time. Me, 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 me. I'm hanging up on Nikon. Yes, hello, who is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's Ezekiel? Yeah, yeah. And where is Roberta L? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been yeah. moved to the printer division? Yeah. And I'll be working with you? Yeah. Okay, I like you, Ezekiel. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. I don't want to hear what you have to say yeah, anyway. Bye. Yeah, yeah. The moral of the story is if a new lens comes out, or a camera body for that matter, that you really, 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 really want, maybe you should place an order as soon as possible and don't hesitate or you might have to wait a long time. Next up, Canon Rumors is reporting that the R1 is getting closer to reality. They claim that two sources have told them to expect some kind of announcement in Q1 of 2024. On top of this, they say, and I quote, we now know that prototypes of the EOS R1 are in the hands of the usual professional photographers. My hands are empty. Don't look at me. 
Don't tease. They go on to say specs are hard to come by, but they've been told that the iris tracking has been improved. I don't actually use that. Quad Pixel AF might not be ready for this model and to expect at least double the resolution of the R3. Double meaning right in the middle of the Z9's 45 and the A1's 50. So something like 48. Duh. Since the R1 isn't exactly a secret, I expect Canon to roll out a six month campaign where they seed out a few features at a time leading up to a full launch. Now, what do you guys think about that? Hey, guess what? Last week's podcast, well, it crushed. Give it a listen wherever you get your podcasts or head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast. New ones come out every Friday. And finally, 10 years ago this week, Sony announced the first full frame mirrorless cameras, the Alpha 7 and the Alpha 7R. And boy, oh boy, did they suck. I mean, I was on board with Sony since day one. Not. What Sony did with the introduction of two full frame cameras in 20 2013 is signal to the old guard that they better shit or get off the pot. And the old guard promptly turned their noses up and carried on with business as usual, which was clearly a mistake. Sony had a plan. They wanted to dominate the full frame camera world and their plan was executed perfectly. They built a loyal following of younger, newer followers with their collective, followed by courting pros to be artisans, which initially was not as easy to do because the system pretty much didn't have any glass yet. And anybody that did switch over early on was, well, that's a story for another day. But year after year, they improved the technology, the shitty feel of the bodies in the hands and the lens lineup continued to grow. And in 2017, they announced the A9. Now you wanna talk about something revolutionary, 20 frames per second with a stacked sensor. This is when things really ramped up. 2018 brought the A7 III, probably the greatest entry level full frame camera the world has ever seen. That thing was two grand and did everything. Now that's when I started to believe. Now in 2019, they brought out the A7 IV, which was a camera that I switched to from Nikon when I went on the road with Bernie Sanders. And in 2021, they surprised the photo world with a 50 megapixel stacked sensor that did 30 frames per second. And that was the A1. Look, the photo community owes a debt of gratitude to Sony for dragging the old guard kicking and screaming into the mirrorless world. If it wasn't for them, there's no telling how far behind camera tech might be. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.